I'm John Carter in Moscow, in Havana, Cuba. Now in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. I'm John Carter in Petra, right here in communist China, reporting from India. Hi, I'm John Carter in the Solomon Islands. I'm John Carter in Soweto, from El Salvador. I'm John Carter in Sydney, Australia. Join us with questions and answers with Pastor John Carter. Hello, friend. I'm John Carter in Los Angeles. Welcome to this special Q&A session. We're so glad that you joined us. Now, we're right in the midst of this dreadful pandemic, and tens of thousands of people have died, and right now there doesn't seem to be any end to it. And so we don't have a studio audience and sitting down the back today, we have a famous voice in America, Wayne Hackett. Now, you're not going to see Wayne on camera because of social distancing. We want to be very, very careful and we want to be very responsible citizens and try to get a handle on this COVID-19. Now, from time to time, People send us questions, and all of the questions, great questions. Today we're going to deal with some of those questions. We're going to deal with questions that came in some time ago and some questions that talk about things that are happening today right here in Los Angeles and in the United States of America. You're going to enjoy this program. And so, my friend, I'm John Carter, and welcome today to the Carter Report. What do you think about Black Lives Matter? Black lives do matter, Wayne. And there's a reason that Black Lives Matter. There's a good reason. They matter because every person is a child of God. When I read the book of beginnings, the book of Genesis, I discover there that man was made in the very image of God. And so a black life is made in the very image of God. If you've got a problem with that, it's because you've got a problem with God. Somebody said this whole question of racism is not so much a social problem, it is a spiritual problem. You see, the closer you come to God, the closer you come to your brothers and your sisters. Yes, of course, I believe it with all my soul. Black lives do matter. And this, of course, was the teaching of the great Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King, this mighty man of God who stood against injustice and racism in America. He taught the truth that every person is distinct and glorious because every person is made in the image of God. Now, when I was a little boy growing up in Australia, I was taken along to an old-fashioned camp meeting. And there I met a mighty man of God. He came from the Solomon Islands. His name was Pastor Carter Rangasso. He was beaten up by soldiers during the Second World War, but he stood up for Christ. They couldn't get him to go against his conscience. When I met this man, and when I looked into his face, I looked into the face of a mighty man of God, and, and he influenced my life, and he still influences my life today. Now, there's a text I want to read to you from the Holy Scriptures. The Bible says in Acts chapter 17 and verse 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. The hymn, of course, is God. As also some of your own poets have said, for we are also, what does it say? His offspring. We are the offspring of God. And therefore, I say to you, in the name of God, black lives matter. Do you think America is a racist country? 
Do I think America is a racist country? Of course there are some racists in America. Of course there are some racists. I've met some, but I want to tell you folks something. A country that is basically racist would not have elected a black man as the president of the United States of America, and I refer to Barack Obama. And so I don't believe that America is basically a racist country. I believe America has made tremendous strides as far as racism is concerned. Do you think black people have been oppressed in America? Well, uh, my friend Wayne, uh, what would you call slavery, brother? It's one of the greatest blights upon the human race. Yes, black people have been oppressed in America and now we are paying the price. I was astounded the other day when I was checking up on this subject to discover that around the world today there are tens of millions of people still in slavery. Can you believe it? And they're in slavery because people have not got a relationship with God. Because if you have a relationship with God, you will believe that every person is a child of God. I want to read to you from the words of Christ, Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel, the good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to reclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. And there's a little story I like to tell people. The first person who released the slaves in the United States of America was a carter. <laughs> you say, you got to be kidding. No, I'm not kidding. His name was Robert Carter, and he had a son by the name of John Carter. Those folks were neighbours of George Washington and some of the founding fathers of the United States of America. And as they studied the scriptures, they came to the biblical conclusion that every person is important in the sight of God and black lives do matter. As a Christian, I believe that every person is a child of God. Would you join the protesters in a march? Would I join the protesters in a march? Well, uh, that depends why they're marching. <laughs> if they're marching for liberty and freedom and keeping the law of God, if they're marching for the right to worship God and also legitimate civil rights, of course I would. Uh, Marching in America and demonstrating for human rights and divine rights is as much a part of America as apple pie. If you're against peaceful protests, you shouldn't live in America, I would say to you. Try living in Russia, and if you don't like Russia, try living in China, which is oppressing a great group of people and have them in concentration camps, a million of them. So this is the place if you believe in freedom. Are you a Republican or a Democrat? Oh, dearie me, am I a Republican or a Democrat? Uh, let me say this to you without offending you unduly, I am an old-time conservative. 
I believe in conserving the great moral teachings of the Bible that, are made, that made America a great nation. But I'm not a, a part of the Republican Party and I'm not a part of the Democratic Party. I'm not criticising those people, but I am a, an independent, an independent. Pardon my saying this, but I don't want some big organisation thinking for me. By the grace of God, I want to think for myself. Fair enough? What about looting? What about looting? Goodness me. There's only one word for it. Dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. Where are the police? Hmm. Does no one care about the mum and pop stores? Looters ought to be locked up. How does stealing and burning resolve the issue of racism? Now, what did Martin Luther King say about looting? Uh, he's one of my great heroes. What did Martin Luther King, what did the civil rights leaders back in those days say about looting? They said it was evil. And so don't try to cover up sin by saying that people somehow have got an excuse to loot. Now, there's a text here I want to read to you, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3. And I'm going to take my dear old Bible here and I'm going to read this text out of the Holy Word of God. Give me a second. I'm trying to find it. It's coming on. 2 Thessalonians, here it is. Chapter 2 and verse 3 says, Don't let anyone deceive you in any way. Don't be, don't be taken in by frauds. For that day will not come, the day of Christ's return, will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. This is talking about the Antichrist. And when the Bible talks about the Antichrist, it calls him the man of lawlessness, the man who is against the law of God. I want you to know that the spirit of lawlessness that is sweeping the world today and sweeping across America does not come from God. It comes from uh, a power that is from below. I believe that a person who loves God and who loves his country will abhor lawlessness and the breaking of the commandments of God and he won't be a person, my friend, who is involved in looting. Would you defund the police? Would I defund the police, my friend asks me. Well, I guess I would if I was in charge of the looting. <laughs> I think it's a crazy, pardon my saying, I know some folks are going to get mad at me and they're going to say, you are politically incorrect. Well, let me be politically incorrect and let me be glad to be politically incorrect on this one. I'm going to read you a text in the Bible in Matthew 24 and verse 21 and 22. And you'll wonder why I'm reading this text, but I'm going to try to explain it to you and then we're going to see it together. Matthew 24 and verse 21 and 22. And this describes the days before the destruction of the great city of Jerusalem, which was destroyed by the Romans, as you know, in A.D. 70. Here it is, Matthew 24, verse 21 and 22. For then shall be great tribulation. This is the great time of trouble. Such as has not been since the beginning of the world, uh, until this time, no, nor ever shall be again. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved, but for the elect's sake, for God's people's sake, those days will be shortened. Now listen to me carefully. I want to explain this to you. What happened back there before the destruction of Jerusalem, friend of mine, was a type of what's going to happen before the end of the world, before Jesus comes. 
And the Bible spoke about a great time of trouble, a, a, a great tribulation, a great time of lawlessness. And Jerusalem became filled with lawlessness and looting and killing and burning and raping and uh, taking people's lives. What happened back there, the Bible says, is a type. You're listening to me. It is a type. It is a shadow of what is going to happen in this world before Jesus Christ returns. The world is going to see a time of lawlessness and anarchy, and I believe this time is starting now. You're listening to me? So I believe... Anything that brings upon a state of lawlessness is not from God, but is from an evil spirit. We should not have any part to do with lawlessness. Is there police brutality? Is there police brutality? Well, I guess there is some. Uh, think about the cruel murder of Mr. George Floyd. It makes your blood run cold. And so, you know, everybody recognises that there has been uh, some police brutality. Are most police officers violent? Um, are most police officers violent? I don't think so. I think most police officers are pretty decent sort of people. Um, we need the police. It's absolutely insane to get rid of our policemen. You know who are going to suffer the most, don't you? Now, this, this has been kept from a lot of the American people. But I'm going to tell you something. When, it, when you get rid of the police, my brother, my sister the minorities are going to suffer the most. The poor people, the minorities, in the worst parts of town, they're going to suffer the most and they're going to have the greatest bloodshed if you get rid of the police. We can't do this. Um, I belong to a Bible study group here and one of the members of that group who sometimes leads the Bible study group is a policeman by the name of Vern. He's been on our television program. He's one of the nicest guys I've ever met. And let me say this too, because a lot of people don't seem to get this. There's a terrible lot of crime here in the United States of America. I'm not going to go into that. There are reasons... We have this terrible crime. One of the reasons is the collapse of the American family unit. Father, fathers are needed, mothers are needed. Kids need a mum and dad. But in Los Angeles alone, you've got more than 100,000 gang members, 100,000. So you're going to get rid of the cops? Hmm? Going to get rid of the cops in Chicago? If you want to have a bloodbath, my friend, uh, get rid of the cops. Let's stop the police brutality by all means. But we need the police. What about the gassing of peaceful protesters? Um, Wayne, uh, it's really un-American and it's very bad. It really is. Uh, I did some study on this. I was shocked to discover that some of the toxic gases they're using are banned by the Geneva Conventions talking about warfare, but fancy using these toxic chemicals upon peaceful demonstrators. It's totally un-American. Now, I believe this, and I don't, I, you know, I guess after I've answered all these questions, I'm going to have a lot of people mad with me from both sides. All I say to you is think it through. Please think it through. Let's be balanced. There needs to be a big reformation of our policing system. Watching police chiefs take a knee and praying with demonstrators, in my humble opinion, is beautiful. 
but we are not a police state. And I'm totally on the side of peaceful protesters. Peaceful protesters should never be gassed. Their protesting is a part of the American ideal and tradition. What is the real solution? What is the real solution? Well, not more speeches or tweets from politicians. Goodness me. After a bit, you get sick of the stuff that you've got to listen to. The solution is not more tweeting and speeches from politicians. I'm tired of it, and I guess you are too. Now, here is the real solution if you want answers. Now, this is a tough one. Not everybody wants real answers. A lot of people just want rhetoric and talk and slogans and signs. But listen to me. And Martin Luther King spoke about this. Dr. Billy Graham spoke about this. America needs a spiritual rebirth. That's the only solution. Anything else is just fooling around, messing around, wasting time, doing a lot of talking. But America needs a spiritual rebirth, and not only America. Many other countries as well. Now, I think I'm going to get a text here, and I'm going to read it to you. And it's a text in the Old Testament, and here it comes. Second Chronicles. You ready for it? Just listen to, listen, my friend, listen to the words of Scripture. If my people, who's talking? Well, God's talking. So listen. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. And the Bible says when bad things happen to us, And we profess to be the people of God. This country of America is the most religious place on the face of the earth. I've gone to lots and lots of countries. Been to Russia, Ukraine, China. I've been to so many countries. But there is no country like America that is so religious. It talks about the Declaration of Independence. You you know it. It talks about the Creator has endowed us with certain unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So America is based on the concept that there's a creator God and that it's based also on the concept that God revealed his will through the Holy Scriptures. Now, a lot of folks don't know this, but George Washington said this. Washington said this, it's impossible to govern a nation without God and the Holy Bible. But the trouble is, in America, we've gotten away from the Holy Bible. We talk about religion a lot, but most of it's just a lot of hot air. And what is needed in this country is a mighty turning to God. We need to God, we need God to somehow get hold of us and shake us. I believe God is allowing this pandemic. You say, no, 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 God. It's just about worse here than any other country in the world. Well over 100,000 people dead. Well over, well over. Dr. Fauci says it's going to get worse unless something dramatically happens. I believe that God is sending us these things to wake us up. There needs to be a mighty turning to God. There needs to be a mighty confessing of our sins. When you go and read the Holy Scriptures, you read Genesis chapter 3 and it talks about how sin came into the world. The human race chose to go against God and we've been going downhill ever since. So Genesis chapter 3 tells us how we lost our life. And John chapter 3 tells us how we got it back again. It talks about the coming of Christ and Christ dying for our sins. So what is needed? We need a mighty, 
mighty repentance. You know, back in the days of Abraham Lincoln, they used to have days of prayer and days of repentance. We need to turn to God and we need to repent of our sins and we need to come to Christ. And if we will do these things, I'm telling you, brother and sister, that God will hear our prayers and God will heal our land, land. This is the urgent cry for this tremendous hour. Now, we've got lots and lots of questions. I've just started. But we're going to have a pause, and then I'm going to be back with Wayne, and we're going to have another session with your questions, Q&A. Stay with us. We'll be back after this break. The Carter Report is now streaming on demand for you. Now you can have the teachings of John Carter anytime, day or night. By streaming The Carter Report, there is more content for you to choose from, and it's easy. If you are new to streaming, all you need to do is purchase a streaming device. It doesn't really matter which one. You can buy a Roku, Amazon Fire, or Apple TV from any major retailer. You or a family member can plug the device into your TV and sign into your internet connection. Do a search for the Carter Report and download the app to your device. From then on, your device and the Carter Report app can provide you with hundreds of on-demand programs. You can also take the Carter Report with you wherever you go. The official free Carter Report mobile app can be downloaded to your phone or tablet. Go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the app. Additionally, you can find Carter Report programs on your favorite podcast. You can also watch us on Vimeo or YouTube. Type the Carter Report in the search box. You can watch hundreds of uninterrupted John Carter teachings whenever you want for as many hours as you want. Travel with John Carter as he circles the globe to bring the gospel to millions of people. Watch the Carter Classics from over 50 years of ministry and gain knowledge from stimulating interviews with Christian leaders. You now have multiple ways to watch the Carter Report. And once you start streaming, you'll find comfort in having these teachings readily available to you whenever and wherever you want for free. Welcome to the inspirational world of John Carter. For a copy of today's program, please contact us at P.O. Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358. Or in Australia, contact us at P.O. Box 861, Terrigal, New South Wales, 2260. This program is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you. We thank you for your continued support. May God richly bless you.